Good morning and welcome. My name is Helen Jennings. I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator based here in the UK. Um, and as I have done every morning this week, I'm coming in at this nine o'clock in the morning slot um, just to just to have a bit of a play with my crafty things and to invite you to um, to join me. Um, if any of you have seen my post this morning, I'm getting some really interesting um, suggestions coming up for the uh, the food items that people are going to that's going to sustain people over this um, period um, because they've just got to pick something food and drink. Quite a lot of alcohol going in there. Um, the things that are going to sustain people but you've got to choose items that start with the uh, letter of your first name so each of the letters of your first name so um yes yeah, some interesting things popping up in there so that will keep me smiling um as the day goes on and hopefully give you something to think about if you're other than um worrying things because i don't know about you but it constantly is at the back of your mind that constant little niggly stress and i wake up every morning with my jaws aching so i must be clenching my teeth in the night which is never a good sign so there's all these videos with physical workouts so you can go elsewhere and find your online zumba or whatever it is that you fancy doing a bit of online yoga or whatever it is that, that some floats your boat, um, you're not going to get any of that here. We're going to do some de-stress, some online crafting. Um, and I have to say that um, you come in every morning and um, as you can see, you've got I've got three sheets of the beautiful um, embossed vellum in front of me. And this is another, the fourth of our second celebration. Release items is this beautiful pack of embossed vellum and you get two of each of those colours soft sea spray pool party and highland heather that's what we're going to play with this morning but you can see that i've not actually touched them and i think it's been the case all of this week that actually you've come and joined with me as i've had my first play with any of these items so it's been a bit of a um, we are making it up as we go along we are um sort of it is the creative process in action there is no here one here's one i've made earlier because my other sheets in my pack are just the same completely untouched so all we have is the paper a few thoughts in our heads and the next um little while to try and see if we can get the two to come together and um, so welcome do come on do come on and say hello to tell me where you are joining me from do let me know how things are in your world do shout out suggestions do share out the videos so that other people can join us um let's do all of those things let's let's spread the crafty love so embossed vellum what shall we do with our embossed vellum i think first of all we'll just use it i'm going to pop away the soft sea foam and the highland heather for a moment and concentrate on this piece which is the pool party it's really beautiful this vellum it's got a lovely sheen to it there we are there we are beautifully picks up the sheen on there a really deep embossed um, dotty sort of grid pattern on there it's really pretty so vellum is always it's gorgeous but it has its challenges um, not least how do you stick it on so that the uh, the adhesive doesn't show underneath um, all adhesive is going to show i think uh, you can try lots of different things um, sponging on with glue doesn't show as much but you know all these things do show a little bit so it's about being being um, inventive with it really so i'm going to cut a piece of this vellum now let's see um i think we will go nine centimeters and we'll cut it the other way by 13.4 
that will keep that piece of vellum um, in scale to a normal C6 card. I've just got, not just, but I have got a Whisper White card base just here. It's got a little bit of a monkey mark on the front there, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to cover it up. And I've got a piece of pool party card as well, and I'm going to cut that at 14.4. Hi, Valerie. Hope you're well this morning. 14.4 by 10. So we'll have that so we're mapped on our piece of Whisper White card. And then we've cut this piece of vellum, which is the same colour, so it's going to not stand out really really boldly as it would not really really boldly but it would stand out a bit more on white um, but we're going to have it on that pool party because it just adds a slightly deeper colour and also that texture as well so vellum is beautiful it's beautiful to work with you can punch it die cut it do all of those sorts of things um, I'm actually I think I'm going to take one side of this and I'm going to tear it so when you tear it you do get a slightly white I don't know if that's picking up a slightly white core on it but that's just another little bit of texture do i want both sides torn i will decide in a minute <clears throat> obviously i could use my tear torn strip for another project um but these colors are really soft they're really soft and subtle they're beautiful i've got a little bit of soft sea foam there as well that i might add in and some whisper white card so let me have a think I'm thinking I might use a couple of stamp sets here. Hi Beryl, I'm fine, hope you're doing okay as well. I've got this lovely poppy set. I've also got the Parisian Beauty. I've, I love these sort of stamped words and things just here. So I think what I might do is take that script stamp and a block to match and I've also grabbed the pool party soft sea foam and um, Highland Heather inks if we need any different ones I'll grab those but I think I'm going to move that bit of vellum let's move my card base I'm going to stamp Of this script onto this bit of card so I'm stamping onto pool party in pool party so it is sort of tone on tone a bit sort of coming off each way just in the background there then we've got our vellum strip on the top and not decided yet whether that's coming down one side like that possibly yeah um we've got some whisper white and i think we will cut that out in a die what sort of die shall we have should we go stitched rectangle should we go stitch label let's go stitch label i think one possibly so let me just die cut a label now I'm thinking I'm going to take this big splodgy stamp And a block for that. <clears throat> and our pool party ink. And 
and we will splodge around the edge of this label because that takes it from being a really stark jumping out colour change into just giving a bit of a soft fading of the colour into the white. I think we're going to stay monochrome. I do quite like monochrome cards so we're just going to stay with the one colour way. Let me just take the colour off of there back in this this poppy I'm going to have a rummage round down by my feet and find my stamping blends. The dark pool party and wrestle, wrestle, wrestle in the background as I hunt out a light pool party. in our light pool party blending that all out a bit it will come down the stem with our dark pool party and the same round for this one. Add in a bit of light pool party in the centre there. And then on our leaf, we'll come round the edge. And that centre leaf with the dark. So using piggybacking off the work that the artist has done to create the flower to put down our light and dark shade. I think we need a bit of ribbon <clears throat> and not really got any pool party ribbon so I'm going to grab that nice soft white seam binding we'll work out how much we want we'll have a little bit to come round and we'll have some to do a bow so I'm going to snip that off oh let's take the cover off my scissors then I will be able to snip it off Move these out the way just for a second. Let's bring in a bit of scrap paper and let's use our dark pool party. This has got a little bit of a, I don't know what was that, was it rich raspberry we used the other day? But that won't matter because that's being, that's being snipped behind but you can see how the minute that I touched that with this ink that was um, activated and, and spread out a little bit. It's a really pretty colour isn't it? This ribbon, I hope they carry this ribbon forward 
just having a ribbon in your collection that you can take your blends and colour so easily. I know you can colour lots of ribbons, but this colours so easily and is so soft and, and to use. And there we are, we have our piece of pool party ribbon. <coughs> Let's grab some tear and tape. And let's, now then, are we going to have the tear and tape? Yeah, I think we'll have it over both layers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down like that. I'm going to position it where I want it to go on that vellum. <coughs> because... Whereas normally I'd stick the ribbon and stick this on top, stick the vellum onto the card base and, you know, then put the ribbon on and then put the mat on. I need to know for this, to attach my vellum, I need to know whereabouts this top um, piece is going to go. Now I am going to put it on with dimensionals. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to take a little piece of tear and tape. I often wonder if you can hear my brain ticking on these videos. I'm going to take a piece of tear and tape, I'm going to lift that up and I'm just going to anchor that down on there. Now that's looking really ugly but it doesn't matter because we're not going to be able to see it eventually. And then I'm going to turn this over and put some dimensionals on it. We really must dig out some large dimensionals. Let's take the backs off of those. We're going to stick that in place on the vellum. Now the reason I've done that is because now, let me chop this other end of this ribbon off. That's the bit I'm going to wrap around and stick underneath. Now I can turn this over and I can instantly see where that vellum is. So I know that I can put some adhesive on there to stick this vellum to the front of my, to my card front without there being any danger of it peeking through. Well, I could if my um, Tombow was going to run. Come on, out you come. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. It had a bit of a plug in the end and I knew it was going to splurt at some point. So thank goodness it did it on my finger and not on the back of my vellum. Right, okay, now we're running. I'm not going to take it right to the edge because as we press this down it will spread out a bit and I don't want it peeping out the side of my mat. So let's turn that over and have that about there. Press that vellum down. So it's nicely because it's light it doesn't need a massive amount. It does mean that it's loose on the edges but I'm not worried about that. But that is now firmly attached in place. We can swing that round now. And attach this with some tear and tape. If that bit's torn off, it might as well go on as well. Let's have this bit, we'll poke that under there, she says hopefully, under you go, that's it. We'll tie this into a hopefully into a bit of a bow 
shouldn't attempt those live, should you? There we go. Now we need some sort of a sentiment on there. I'm going to pinch, this is another stamp set I'm going to be using in a minute, which is the Magnolia. I'm just going to have this Hello. I think we'll go with, as we've got the stitch labels out, let's see. Let me cut another mini stitch label. onto this block for a minute and we'll stick with our pool party it won't vary from our colorway my pool party is one that very definitely is waiting to be replaced because it's every now and then it pops out of its case let's go that way around and we'll have a hello is it me you're looking for and let's take our splodges and just bring a bit of splodginess to the background there. And I think I quite like the idea of it coming off of the center, the center piece just there. So I will grab a glue dot for this end Ooh. and a dimensional for this end. And we can have that sticking on there. Then let's find our card base. Let's put some Tombow on the back of here. And let's stick that on there. So there we go, a little monochrome pool party card. It's got some poppy in there, coloured in with the stamping blends. We've got some of that script from the um, Parisian Beauty, we've got the splodges from the, the poppy stamp set as well. So we've got that poppy and those splodges from the stamp set. And we've got this gorgeous layer of vellum that we've just torn that edge along there. So that and some of this ribbon that we've also co coloured with, with the poppies. So looking really lovely, but while we've got our stamping blend out, what we could do, I don't think... Mm, rummaging through my box of, of embellishments I'm going to take some little pearls I think and we'll take our stamping blends again in the brush end and we'll give those a bit of a pool party hue so they tie in quite nicely with our Just pinned that one. No idea where that went. Oh, I can see it. There it is. So let's pop the end on that. Let's grab a. Let's grab my uh, take a pick tool, and we'll just have a few little 
pool party pearls on there as well. Yep. So there we are, beautifully coordinated pool party pearls, pool party ribbon, pool party vellum, pool party stamping blends, pool party ink. So a beautiful little monochrome card but using a layer of that really lovely embossed vellum. So that's one way to use your vellum to add in sort of layers and interests to things. You can, of course, create, it's, it's a fairly good weight vellum. You could get away with creating actually a card base with it if you wanted to. Um, just have your whole card made out of vellum. Let me just tuck these away for now. Let's clean up these. And clear the decks ready to start again. that in there so, and we'll pop away our Parisian beauty and our painted poppies right and then we're going to go on and we're going to do something a little bit different let me pop away the pool party just put these back where they were and then I shall know where to find them that's the theory it works relatively well <laughs> okay so there's card number one let's move that to one side now for the for my second project I thought I would take some of the Highland Heather magnolia and um, highland heather and um, paper and um i was thinking about magnolias again as i'm looking out i can still see my neighbor's bush it's amazing how quickly magnolias go over isn't it it's gone from sort of being quite really quite bright and white magnolias with pink tinges to starting to look a bit brown at the edges they're so gorgeous but they go over so quickly um, but I thought we'd have a go at creating. We'd do some big magnolias. See what the big magnolias look like if we were to make them out of um, embossed um, vellum. Now, way back last May and June, when the magnolia suite first came out, um, there was lots of these big magnolias around. Um, but I've not seen any for a little while because, you know, sort of things move on, don't they? But um, I thought it'd be nice to see what they look like created from vellum. Let's do some flowers from vellum. So the first thing I'm going to need is five of these balloons. One, two, and they will form my big petals for my magnolia. Now, normally, if I was going to create a flower like this, I'd have plugged my hot glue gun in. Um, but I think <coughs> the glue would be too heavy for, um, for a project like this. So we've got five petals out of the, um, the vellum, five big petals. We also need a one and a half inch circle. And if you're looking for instructions for these, if you go onto YouTube, um, to Stamping Up's YouTube channel, they actually did do a video, and I'll, um, I'll try and link it. When I um, go to edit this video later, I will try and link that um, YouTube video so that you can go and have a look at the magnolias in construction. Obviously, they're doing theirs in white card yellow inners and those sorts of things whereas here we're sort of being a little bit more off the wall and um, doing it in Highland Heather vellum why not um, so we're going to need the magnolia dies and we're going to need that one that one 
if I swing this over we're going to need that one so those are our three layers and we're also going to need an inner for our magnolias so I'm going to take that one we will wait and see what we decide to do whether we want leaves or whether we don't let me take that largest die just there let's have a bit of an estimate as to how long big a strip we want about two and a half inches two and a half inches yeah about two and a half inches so I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip so about a six and a half centimeter strip down there and then out of my embossed vellum I am going to cut one of these one of these one of these I will just lay my dies along my strip and then run it through all at once. So let me do that. My die cutting machine is balanced here on my beautiful new trolley that my children bought me for Mother's Day. Even though I didn't get to see the girls but it's had been all passed to Sam, who duly put it together. And I came down on Sunday morning to find it piled up with cards and um, all made up, piled up with cards, ready to go. So that meant I could spend um, Sunday making it up, filling it up deciding what was going to go in it and I have to say it has been proved really useful this week I'm just going to pop those in there for now I'll put them away properly later now we're going to want an inner um, so I'm actually going to go to the um, coloured vellum that we've already got so I've picked out that piece of coloured yellow vellum just there So it's not an embossed vellum, it's just, but it is, it is coloured. I thought, perfect. We'll keep the vellum theme going rather than, I felt it might be a bit harsh to have a coloured piece of cardstock in the middle of there. So we'll just add in a yellow piece of vellum and tuck that away. Now, what I am going to do is I have got here a Highland Heather um, sponge dauber. So on the um, original magnolias that they were doing, you'd have these all in white card and then you'd get some so saffron ink and you would sponge your so saffron ink up from the center just to give a yellow shading. But I thought it might be quite nice to go in. It needs to be still quite subtle because obviously the nature of these are they are quite pastel colours and um, so you don't want anything too harsh just by adding in a bit of shading in there might help to give it a bit of a 3D effect so I'm just going to go in with my sponge dauber and I'm just going to pull out some colour from the centre of that petal just so that when the flower is put together you get that darker centre coming out One, two, three. Oh. oh, and here's the fifth of those big balloon petals. Five, then with your other pieces, you just want to daub some ink into the center there. And on this one, I could have gone sort of gorgeous grape or something or taken it a bit darker but I just wanted 
didn't want it to be too harsh and obviously where it's hitting those embossed bumps it is coming up a bit darker anyway so I'm not going to worry about my circle and I could have made my circle out of card but I think we're going to be fine right now to build our flower now as I said if I were doing this out of card I'd have definitely got my hot glue gun out um, but because it is vellum I'm going to build it up with um, glue dots so I'm just putting a glue dot on the back of those flowers on the back of those petals and I'm going to bring those round Tweak those a little bit so it's sort of slightly even and I don't know whether you can catch that but look can you see that even with glue dots you can see it, the, the, the adhesive coming through they're just there is very little you can do to stop that so let's come with now so what I will do and what I perhaps should have done before I started is I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just gently going to curl those leaves. And we might need a a bit more of a play with them. I'm sort of getting them coming up and coming out and get a bit of movement going on in them. And despite the fact that these have been die cut and messed about, that embossing still seems to be holding quite firm. It's a good deep embossing. Do the same with these. Let's curl these petals up. And let's pick a glue dust up on the bottom of that. And the next one. I'm just, excuse me, rustling about. Let's really curl those outer leaves up now, outer petals. <laughs> I 
Right, I'm going to take my little inner, let's give that a bit of a curl as well. And a bit of a glue dot in the middle there. To grab a, and I can find them rummaging around. gem in the center there. There we have beautiful magnolia bloom. Now obviously you could have that. So when I did the when I first did the um, when the magnolias first came out I created this little box. So you can see that it's getting a bit grubby now where it's been knocking about in the craft room. Um, but you can see where that was created with the sort of the bit of shading um, around it in the yellow. Got quite a bit of Taz stuck to that now, started to fade in the sunshine. But you can see your, your um, blossom there. These perhaps needed to come in a little bit further. Perhaps needed to bring those back petals in a little bit further. Let's, um, let me just see if I can do that, if I can bring these in so they're not quite so sticky out I'm just rebuilding, so overlapping them, making them get as much smaller, that's better, a much smaller base. There we go. That's more like it. with all these things you can have a bit of a play so there's our just our general um, flower and um, you obviously if you wanted to put it on a card base you could stamp that big image onto your card and then add this on top put your flowers in the background add that on top there are some leaf pieces in here, so I might cut out some of those. Let's go with three of them and we'll cut that out of the soft foam vellum. Do, do, do. Let's just trim a little bit off of there. cut out three of those leaves and this then obviously you could you can use it in a frame you could um, use it on a card front you could use it on a gift box you could use it on a gift bag soft sea foam leaves across there we go just look 
looking to see if I brought any Highland Heather cardstock with me and I didn't. So let's grab a piece. There we go. You pop that onto some Highland Heather, it really pops out the detail on that vellum. So there is a little embossed Highland Heather vellum magnolia. And I will have a think about what I'm going to do with that. But while we have got um, all of these things out and about and we're playing, let's see, is that should be enough, shouldn't it? For... So I've got a two and a half inch circle there. So I've just popped out the two and a half inch circle out of vellum. And I'm then going to, we've done these before as well. I'm going to tear that round. In a spiral. Then I think I'm going to start this. I'm going to turn it over so that the embossed is on the out on the bottom, and the um, clear sort of gives it a, the effect of lots of white dots on the other side. It's on the inside, and I'm just going to start. I'm going to turn that over and I'm just going to start rolling it and I'm going to roll that vellum rolling, rolling, rolling keep it rolling all the way around that spiral Ooh. Now, I don't know whether glue dots are going to be sufficient with this. We shall find out. I'll take my end off my pokey tool and let's pick up. I'm going to use two. So I'm going to put some glue dots on that end piece just there. That's one. Let's go with the second one. well to me um, take a big tool so I'm going to wrap that round and then what we need is for those glue dots to stick that bottom bit and allow that to sort of unravel a bit and then we've got just some little vellum roses and obviously again you could add in some sea foam leaves to that yeah I don't know whether that's going to be enough to stick it hi Susan lovely to have you join us Hope you're doing okay out there. Or as okay as any of us are. So there we are, some little vellum roses and that's just simply created by making a circle. So that was a two and a quarter inch circle. Obviously, if you've got circle dies, you could cut dies. You don't need to um, cut at all. I mean, you can just literally start tearing, um, just tear a circle out draw around a plate make a big one um, so yeah you can go any size you like on your circle so that just literally is turning it into a spiral and winding it up and I'm sure you've seen those lots of times before but there we are a couple of different 
vellum flowers. Might make a few more little vellum flowers and make that up into sort of a little little frame or something or on a um what I could do is so hold on to your hats we're actually running a bit ahead of ourselves today so let me just let me just grab a piece of packaging so this is just the packaging that you get when um, you get your um, papers and those sorts of things I'm going to grab my guillotine rather than my trimmer for this because it's obviously quite thick. And I'm just going to chop a bit off. It's quite good for um, giving you, because it's a nice firm board, you can use it for um, covers on notebooks and all sorts of things. So don't throw it away. I've got lots of it. I'm actually going to run my biggest um, stitched label through my big shot. I'm going to run it through a couple of times. I've got various thicknesses of this cardboard. Some of it comes a bit thicker, so I've gone for a slightly thinner one. It's obviously still thicker than normal cardboard but there we are we have we have a banner now what I am going to do with this is we're going to go a little bit we're going to go really off piece here I'm going to dig about and find Excuse me, while I'm wandering off, finding the things that I want to do this, that will be perfect. Right, I've actually got some gesso here. Obviously, this isn't a stamping up product, um, but what it does do is it gives you a nice base on things like this in order to stamp and things on. It gives you a... I'm just going to paint that over there. As you can see, really taking lots of care. And that just gives us, well, it takes away a little bit of the, oh gosh, look at me, I'm brown cardboard. Um, but it's also going to give us a base to work on. Quick slurp of of tea I am going to I'm trying to limit my use of baby wipes but I think on this occasion I now have gesso all over my fingers it may be a necessity and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that paintbrush that I've just been using and I'm going to wrap it in a baby wipe to keep that all wet until the point that I can get to go and wash it in a minute pop the lid back on my gesso um, I'd normally walk away at this point, go and make a cup of tea, come back in a little while. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I am going to nip off and fetch something, come back in a little while, but then we will dry it with a heat gun. So hold on to your hats. All right, I'm still going. I'm just off the Right, I'm back. Is it dry yet? Um, while, while that is drying, I just wanted to think, I'm going to share with you some of the cards and things that I've had. So um, obviously it was Mother's Day on Sunday and my girls all make me a card. So th this one was one from my um, daughter Emily, Just Breathe. I think that's very appropriate using that season set. This is from my granddaughter Thea. As you can see, we have Nanny on the bottom here, 
and um, with a beautiful rainbow um, and nanny love you dear isn't that gorgeous she'll be four on monday and bless her and we're not going to be able to get to see her for her party this was from my older daughter so i wasn't able to see her she put them in the post they arrived yesterday this is her when she's little and the card just says i'll always be your little girl that one made me cry so i opened that one and made me cry i opened this one it made me laugh this is my grandson here we have marshall from paw patrol who appears to have been decapitated but bless him marshall is his favorite so um you know I've been sent his favourite, so how lovely is that? And lots of lovely writing. So that's from Kellen, who's three. And then I also received this card yesterday. So Anita, thank you. So not only has she sent me a lovely Peter Rabbit card, but it contains chocolate. So it's like emergent a card and emergency supplies so anita thank you very much for that so i thought i'd just share those with you it's just so lovely isn't it so my cards some cards i had on sunday obviously um and i had a lovely card as well from my son and his fiance um but yeah so they were my handmade ones <laughs> so that was lovely let's give this a bit of a blast with the heat gun just to dry that off. Now if I'd got more time I might have given that another coat. But we're not going to worry now. Right, let me move that painty paper underneath it. Let's bring in our Highland Heather oh. and let's go back. So I've got that um, script stamp out again and I've got my splodgy stamp out again. Let's put a bit of, a bit of background on our panel. So we'll start with some splodges. Add some splodges around the outside there. I could, of course, covered it with um, some DSP. Could have covered it with some of the vellum, but I'm just going to ink up this script. And I'm not really worried about it's just going in the background with a bit of nonsense. Now the other step we could bring in is the Beauty Abound set. Because the Beauty Abound, as well as having a nice, they've got a nice splatter in there as well also has these splodges so let's put down some splodges so we're really just building up some layers in the background and then having done that that then makes quite a nice backdrop for our flowers So let's grab our glue dots and I'll put, oh, I think about three on that bottom piece. And then we'll put some glue dots on the back of our leaves and have those 
sort of coming out the side a bit. Here's our little rose. Now, our little rose has definitely come undone. So we might need to do that back up. I'm wondering. Possibly put some Tombow in the bottom of that, but I might also just get a big dimensional and put that in the middle of there. So as long as we unfurl that flower so it's not visible. Need a couple more of those little um, couple more roses. Uh, we're not going to get another circle out of there. Yes, we are. One. I think we're going to want three. I think we do things in threes, don't we? So again, we're just going to tear these. flat side uppermost so that when it opens out you've got the embossed side showing because actually with these roses it's the inside that you tend to see more than the outside so we'll just roll that all that way and let it go. Oh, now I've torn it off. Never mind. We'll just, we'll put a dimensional on that bit just there. That will act as our base. Give that a good push down. I'm also going to grab, I think I'm going to grab the sprig punch and and the sea foam. I will have a couple of sprigs, so not only can you die with this, you can't die cut this some. Um, Vellum, you can add in. Morning, Hannah. You can add in some punches as well. So last but not least, let's tear this one round. And you never get the same effect with these flowers. They're all going to look different because obviously they're all going to have torn differently. Or you might just rip the end off like I did just now. <laughs> right, so let's roll it, roll it. These look quite nice out of things like newspaper as well. D 
DSP. You can do it out of card. Felt. You can do them out of felt and make little brooches. We've obviously got other floral um, stamps and punches. We could have done a vellum daisy. Oh no, we weren't going to use glue dots. We've gone for the dimensional. So we'll tuck that over, give it a good push down. So that's sitting on that dimensional. We've got a little cluster of roses. So we could add a little sentiment in there. We could come in with some um, ribbon. Um, That's going to be now I am thinking to myself I think the um, the gorgeous grape element of that is a bit much so Cut it off. Because why not? It's our ribbon. We can do what we like with it. You liked the gorgeous grape as well. And I think we should have left it on. Right, let's um, trim that off a bit. And let's stick these flowers and these leaves down. So I'm going to put my sprigs in there. One. And... And we'll add in some of the little roses. The song tunes come into your head as you just generally anyway. Good year for the roses. That was um I can see him. His name is just there on the tip of my tongue. It will come to me in a moment. Begins with E. Nobody's helping me out. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Brain freeze. All that needs now is a bit of, um, I think possibly we'll go white baker's thread. I 
Oh, these roses are not white or red. These are Highland Heather Vellum. So let's snip off a bit of that. Don't look at the back, that's very ugly. But I think we'll have an option for that as well. Let's, um, let's stick that on there like that. Find the end. And then we will we'll just grab a piece of Highland Heather card. I'm going to run that through with that same stitched frame. Tombow and instantly we're nice and neat on the back as well. So you could use that to put a write a greeting on if you were giving this, sending this out to somebody. There we are, considering we started the morning not really sure where we were going to go. I really didn't envisage that I was going to be going with a, a little home decor piece. But how lovely. Something a little bit different. Let me just grab so there's our home decor. Oh, we could have used some of this ribbon, so we could have brought in some um some of the purple posy ribbon as well couldn't we but we didn't and here is our monochrome card so really soft pastels and we've got the highland heather we've got the soft sea foam and we've got the pool party so a little bit of something with all of that vellum so i hope you've enjoyed that random wonder um and I will post pictures of those. I will post pictures of links where you can find the um, the stamping up demo on making um, white magnolias like this one. Um, and I will be back tomorrow when we will be looking at the final um, item in that second release celebration which is the tax in bloom we have dipped into that a couple of times as the week's gone on but we will be giving it our full attention tomorrow morning so thank you for joining me everybody um, have a lovely day the sun is shining again here i think it's time for another cup of tea and who knows as the day goes on i may even eat one or two of those chocolates from anita's card so Stay safe, everybody. Stay well. And um, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. <laughs>